Hey guys, welcome back to another lesson in my beginner piano course level one. If you enjoy these videos, don't forget to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. In this lesson, we're going to learn about steps and skips. In the previous lesson, we learned about the grand staff and notation, how to identify pitches from the staff and play the appropriate keys on the piano. In piano playing, there are so many notes on the keyboard and there are so many notes on the stave that it would be very difficult to memorize all of them, especially for a beginner, and it would take a very long time before you could play notes quite fast and read them with ease. Now, when it comes to reading, we have a lot of tricks that we can use in order to make our reading much easier and more efficient. And one of these tricks that's going to help you the most is understanding what steps and skips are. And if you understand this, trust me, reading notes is going to be much, much easier and much quicker. So let's start with something called steps. A step is basically the next note on the piano. So if I play a C, and then I play a D, I can say that the C and D are a step away from each other because they are right next to each other. So there's nothing between them. C goes to D and D goes to C. And if I move from C to D, I can say that I'm moving up a step. And if I go from D to C, I can say that I'm moving down a step. Now, why is this important? If you look at the staff or stave, if one note is on the line and the next note is going to be in the space above or below that line, you can see that note is moving up a step or it's moving down a step. And if you understand that, then you don't actually need to know what all of these notes are that come after the first note because you can just look at the direction and the steps. And you can play a very long sequence of notes without actually knowing what they are. Now, as you can see on the example here, if I go from line to the next space or from space to the next line up or down, it's called a step. But if I go from line to line, so if I skip a space or if I go from space to space, that's not a step anymore. So the step is always the adjacent note or the next space or next line from where you are. Now that we understand what a step is, let's try to put this into practice. Let's have a look at this little example here. As you can see, we have a lot of notes coming after each other. And let's assume that I don't know all of these notes, but I can work them out, but it would take a long time. If I know that the first note is C, then all I have to do is look at the direction of the steps because every single note is a step away from each other in this little line of music. So if I start on C, the next note is going to be a step up because you can see that the direction is going up and the next note is going up again from D to E. Now, when I get to E, I can see the shape changes. It starts going down and it's going down to D. So one step down. So in the first bar, I start on C, step up, step up, and then step down. And I can use this logic all the way to the end of this little example or piece. Almost 16 notes without actually knowing what they are just by following steps up and down. Now, obviously, this only works when the piece is made up of mostly steps. But as we progress with our piano knowledge, we're going to recognize more and more distances between notes. And these little tricks are going to help us to make reading music a lot easier. The second building block of sight reading or reading music is going to be the skip. Now, the skip is much easier to understand once you know what a step is. Now, as I told you, the step is the adjacent note but a skip is going to be, as the name says, skipping one note. So if I'm at middle C and I want to go one skip up, I have to skip D and go to E. So one note is missing between the E and the C. That's why it's called a skip. So if we go C, D, E, C and E is going to be a skip because this note is missing. And if I go C, D, it's a step because nothing is missing. They are adjacent notes. Now, if you look at the staff or the stave notation, then you can see that a skip is much easier sometimes to recognize because it goes from line to line or it goes from space to the next space. If a note is on any of the lines and the next note is a line up or a line down, you can say that you have to go a skip up or a skip down. And if a note is in the space and the next note again is a space higher or one space lower, you're going a skip down or a skip up. 
Now that we understand skips as well, let's have a look at this little example again in the bottom. And as you can see, we're starting again on middle C with our right hand. And all I have to look at now is whether my skips are going up or they are going down. This example contains only skips, but changing directions. There are no steps and no other intervals. So you should be able to play it from beginning to end just by looking at the direction of the skips and really concentrating that on the keyboard, you're always missing one note between or skipping one note between your notes. If you understand skips and steps, there's a whole bunch of music that you can already play. Most importantly, if you follow the skips and steps and you recognize skips and steps very quickly, your sight reading is going to be 10 times faster than trying to work out each note individually. If you enjoy this lesson, make sure to check out the premium version of this course, which is going to include a free method book, lots of filmed video tutorials for sight reading exercises, technical exercises, performance pieces, and best of all, you're going to get personal feedback from me to make sure your progress is as smooth and efficient as it can get.